The Commission recognised that implementing their reforms would have significant costs, which the Government will need to consider against other funding priorities and calls on constrained resources. In the current public spending environment, we have to consider carefully the additional cost to the taxpayer uh, of the Commission's proposals against other funding priorities. And within the Commission's recommendations, they present a range of options, including on the level of a cap and the contribution people make to living costs in residential care, which could help us to manage the system and its costs. That is why we intend to engage with stakeholders on these issues, including on the trade-offs involved. Reform in this area will need to meet a number of tests, including whether proposals would promote closer integration of health and social care, whether proposals would promote increased personalisation, choice and quality, whether proposals would support greater prevention and early intervention, whether a viable insurance market and a more diverse and responsive care market would be established as a result of the proposals, the level of consensus that additional resources should be targeted on a capped cost scheme for social care, and what a fair and appropriate method of financing the additional costs would be. And as the Right Honourable Member opposite, the Shadow Health Secretary and I have discussed, we will also engage directly with the official opposition in order to seek consensus on the future of long-term care funding. We will then set out our response to the Law Commission and to the Dilnock Commission in the spring, with full proposals for reform of adult social care in a white paper and a progress report on funding reform. It remains our intention to legislate to this effect at the earliest opportunity. Mr Speaker, the care of the elderly and vulnerable adults is a key priority for reform under this Government, and I commend this statement to the House.